David, I want to cut to the chase. Mark Benioff of Salesforce, that Dow component, in a recent conversation with Bloomberg was scathing about the, the lack of philanthropy, the clumsiness of the new rich of California, the new rich of technology. Reed Hastings seems to be providing real leadership here. Is his gift to black universities, is that enough to be a game changer to teach the younger crew how to give away the millions? Well, it was a $120 million gift and it got a lot of attention as it should have gotten. Uh, when I asked him about it, he said he's actually made very other large gifts. Actually, some are larger, but they just haven't been publicized. So I think he will have an impact. But I think Mark makes a good point. You have people that are now worth tens and twenties and thirties of billions of dollars, and you wonder what they're going to do with all that money, uh, just piling it up. Well, what do you do with it? I mean, this is something you, with your success, have faced. And you know, we, full disclosure, folks, Mr. Bloomberg, the founder of Bloomberg LP, and this radio and TV property, has faced the same conundrum. Why is it so hard for some, and particularly these young technology types, to give money away? Well, typically, throughout the history of the world, people tended to give away money towards the end of their life, and they would live at the 60s, 70s, 80s. Now, a lot of people making money in their 20s, 30s, and 40s and they haven't really expected to make this much money, and it just takes a while for them to give it away, I guess. But well, hopefully they will do some things. A number of these people have signed the giving pledge, as Mike Bloomberg has and as I have, but I think it will take a while because the amount of money that people accumulated quickly is just un unbelievable. For example, the founder of Tesla, he now has a net worth of, let's say, $70 billion or $100 billion. Uh, he made it so quickly, it just takes a while to give it away and figure out what you want to do with it. But more philanthropy should be done, for sure, by all the wealthy people that now have it, money. So, David, there are those who are looking to give away money, and then there are other people who are counting on continuing to work until uh, they are very old because they need to support themselves. For those individuals, uh, and speaking to your interview with Reed Hastings, can they expect to go back to the office? Can you tell us what Netflix's CEO had to say about that? Um, well, I think uh, Reed Hastings would like people to come back to the office, but they want to make certain that it's safe and so forth. He's been working remotely and actually from uh, uh, you know, his house in, in California. Uh, many CEOs like Reed Hastings recognize that people are not coming back to work really until there's a vaccine, until there's, there's safe uh, public transportation, and until there's a lot of child care for, for you, people who have young children. So I think it's gonna take a while. I think you probably aren't gonna see people back to work in full measure for another six to nine months. So he didn't ask you whether you have a Netflix subscription, and we've learned some private information about that, David, which you can or cannot share on this program. It's just us. Uh, but I do uh, want to hear what he expects going forward. Was this a blip giving him a boon during this work-from-home era, or does he see the success uh, parlayed into a longer-term establishment of streaming as the entertainment of choice? Well, when he started Netflix, if people may remember, he basically had a system where you you rented a D DVD and he mailed it to you overnight and you mailed it back to him. And then he eventually got into the streaming business ahead of everybody else and caught the rest of Hollywood by a flat footed. He built the biggest streaming business now with a market value of about $223 billion. And at one point he wanted to sell the company for $50 million to then the biggest company doing this blockbuster. And they said, no, they didn't want to pay $50 million for it. That's the best thing that ever happened to him financially. <laughs> David, how do you parse the Netflixes and how did Mr. Hastings speak about the idea of spending, 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 and not really generating profits? How do you partition companies that clearly make an income statement profit in those where it's a little, not, not smoke and mirrors, but it's a little bit mysterious? Well, people made fun of Jeff Bezos for a while. He was just building market share. They said he'd never going to earn any money. People made fun of uh, Elon Musk, that the Tesla would never get anywhere, and people made fun of Netflix, spending a lot of money on original content. Turns out that these entrepreneurs have had the last laugh so far. Clearly, when you can build market share, uh, you can really get a lot of customers, and they get addicted to what you're, you're, what you're producing, and ultimately, that's what happened to Netflix. People are now, I won't say addicted, but people really love it, and it's really unique. Nobody else is really competing with them and, and at the scale that they're able to, to uh, produce and show uh, their, their, their content. David Rubenstein, one final question. This is quite a segue over to SoftBank and the, the latest derivative uproar that we've seen. Could SoftBank do what they did in investment management out of Abu Dhabi with the ex-Deutsche Bank crew 
Could they have generated these derivative strategies with call options if they were simply registered in the United States? I think it would be tougher, and I think a lot of people in the investment world were surprised by this because uh, it's a staggering amount of money. It appears about $20 billion of, of call options. Right now, it may be profitable, but uh, it's a fairly risky thing to do. <laughs>